All right, guys, the most important yet also most overlooked thing when it comes to selling clothing on eBay is title structure. Listing your item correctly with the right title is going to dramatically increase your sales on eBay. So I'm going to show you guys exactly how I list my clothing items, as you can see here. This comes from a combination of my personal experience, literature from eBay, tips and tricks I've learned along the way. This isn't the one size fits all, but if you make this your foundation, you're going to sell tons more clothing online on eBay, especially. So let's go ahead and jump into my title structure. All right, guys, we're here in the garage. I'm going to show you guys how to title an item properly on eBay. We have been told over and over again that eBay is a brand driven marketplace. So when we list our items, the first thing we want to start with is the brand. For example, Tommy Bahama, Travis Matthew, Polo Ralph Lauren, you get the picture. After that, we're going to want to go immediately into what the item actually is, whether it be a shirt, a jacket, things of that nature, shorts, you know, things like that. Next up, we want to go into the gender, male, men's, or women's. After that, we want to do the size, whether it be extra large, large. You guys can spell these out or you can abbreviate them to save space in your title for keywords. Um, each individual listing is different. If you want to stack it with more keywords, you can abbreviate. If there's not as many keywords for the certain thing you're selling, you can use the abbreviations. Next up, we got color, blue, red, orange, yellow. After that, we got characteristics like short sleeve, quarter zip, button up, things of that nature. After that, we have the type. Right now, I'm wearing a polo. It could also be a dress shirt, Hawaiian, things like that. After that, we have the style. This is a solid shirt, but then there's also striped, polka dot, geometric, things like that. And then after that, you want to put your keywords. Um, it could be a flip cuff. In this example that we're going to talk about, there's the Island Zone shirt. If it has a cool print on it, like a panda, you could put panda, all, all the keywords, which I go over in depth on other videos on this channel as well. So in this example, we're going to pretend that we have a blue Tommy Bahama shirt that we just got from a thrift store that we're going to list on eBay. So the way that I would do that is first off, brand Tommy Bahama. What is it? Shirt, gender, men's, size, extra large, color, blue, characteristics, short sleeve, type, polo, style, striped, keywords, island zone, vacation, things of that nature. So I would do Tommy Bahama shirt, men's XL, blue, short sleeve, polo, striped, island zone. Now I'm going to hop into my phone and share my screen and show you guys how I would list that on a cell phone. All right, so we're hopping into my phone screen here and I'm teaching you guys how to create a listing from scratch. I would recommend doing this for at least the first thousand items, but bare minimum the first hundred. And then I'm going to show you guys later on in the video how to copy your own listings or others listings to speed this process up. But like the example, we're just going to type in all of those words that we used to pull up a listing. Once we actually hit submit, we're going to see that there are a few options that we can choose from, but we're going to go ahead and continue with outmatch and select pre-owned. Then we're going to go ahead and fill out these listings. You're going to see on this first screen here, the title is already populated because we put that in. You're going to want to make sure that it's a regular size and go ahead and click the, measure, the uh, sizing there. I'm going to scroll down. Most of these item specifics are going to be auto populated for you because of our title, which is nice. And then any of them that fit that didn't go in, you can go ahead and do that manually. Then you're going to scroll down to the bottom here. You're just going to make sure that you have your pricing set up. This uh, screen right here, when it goes over suggested pricing, a lot of times it's way, way off. So especially on an island zone shirt here, it's going to command more of a premium. So you go ahead and you adjust the, the listing accordingly. And you go ahead and you put in your shipping policy. I have flat rate shipping. All right, guys, now we've gone over, go over title that. structure and how to actually list our items. But if you don't have any items, you're not going to be able to list them, obviously. There's a couple of different ways to learn what to look for. Well, I learned a lot through YouTube. But one of the best ways is to actually just look them up yourselves. So 
we're pretending that I'm in a thrift store right now. We're actually just in my garage. But the best way is to just look things up on your phone as you go. So when you're in the thrift store, you're just going through and you're looking at tags. And then you see here, okay, there's a Bonobos tag right here, as you guys can see. Bonobos. And I'm actually going to go over 10 men's clothing brands here at the end of the video for you guys to look out for. But this is definitely a good demonstration of how to look things up. So you're going to go to your phone. You're going to go to the eBay app and you're just going to type in Bonobos shirt. It's going to show anywhere, you know, Bonobos. I'm sure there's about, I'm going to guess there's about 3,000 listed. Then you go over onto the left hand navigation. You go to filters and then you go to sold. And then you can see how many have actually sold and for what price. So if you're in the thrift store and you find this for $8 and you see that Bonobos as a brand overall is selling anywhere between 15 and 30, then you're seeing that the long sleeves kind of sell more between 20 and 30. And then you see that the plaid designs or the darker colors are selling between that 25 to 30. For $8, I'm going to pick this up. If you see that it's four dollars, you're definitely gonna pick it up. So then you put, so then you grab it, you put it in your cart. You're going through. You're seeing a bunch of different ones. Obviously, a ton of these are gonna be ones that are sellable because I've hand picked them out. But then you're gonna go and you're gonna see. Oh, this looks interesting. I have here. I don't even know how to pronounce this. I'm terrible at pronouncing the names of all these clothing companies and sunglasses and stuff that I sell especially if you saw my last video about the, the flat irons and stuff. I pronounced all of those wrong, but it's all right. You don't have to know everything about it to sell them. So you see here, this is a BCBG Maxaria shirt. I wonder if those sell. You go into your phone, you type into eBay BCBG Maxaria shirt. You go through those steps again and you see, oh, sweet. There's a few of these listed. A ton of them are selling between the $20 to $30 range. This is only $5 at my thrift store. I'm going to pick it up. But the best way that I'll go over later to do your research is actually outside of the thrift store in your own home during your spare time and free time. I have a video if you want to check it out called This One Tip Exploded My eBay Sales. It's my most viewed um, video on my channel. I go into how to do keyword research and see what's selling for what price without even having to go to the thrift store. All right, again, so we're using our imagination here. You guys are going to notice in your thrift stores, these brands that I'm talking about aren't going to be popping up too much. And there's a reason why the brands that are worth more are worth more. It's because they're harder to find. So as you guys are going through, you're going to be like, oh, Faded Glory. I wonder if Faded Glory sells for a lot. Look it up on eBay. Oh, there's like 80,000 listed and only 1,200 have sold. And all the used ones are only selling for about $6 plus shipping. It costs $8 here at the thrift store. That's a no-go. Let me keep checking. Let me keep checking. Oh, sweet. Okay, Van Heusen. I remember growing up, Van Heusen had good dress shirts. I'll bet you those sell for a lot of money. You look it up, there's 55,000 listed. Only 4,000 have sold. And the used ones are going for 7 bucks again. It's like, oh, okay. Well, I'm glad I looked that up. Definitely going to pass on Van Heusen every time I see it, with small exceptions here and there, but honestly, Van Heusen, it's just a pass. Oh, look at here. We got a George. Okay, yeah, let's look up George. That looks like a good brand. It has the name of a guy, and I've heard online that men's clothing that have a man's name as the title usually sells for pretty good. Hundreds of thousands listed with only 2,000 sold, and used ones are selling for $0.99 cents to $3. All right, we're definitely going to pass on George. I'm going to be honest with you guys. There's not a lot of men's clothing that sell for good money. I typically, on average, have to go through about 180 pieces of clothing to find one that fits my demographic to sell, that fits my business model. So I usually go through about 4,000 to 5,000 shirts a day, and I usually walk away with anywhere from 15 to 30, going through 4,000. So you just got to look, you got to look things up, start to notice what materials feel nicer, start to notice what styles, there's things like flip cuffs. This is an Aztec print, so it's going to go for more money. I'm going to go more into depth about things like this in a minute, but you just got to do your research every day at the thrift store, at home, go over all of these things, what's selling well, what's going up in price, what's going down. 
always be making different strategies to make the most money selling men's clothing on eBay. All right, guys, welcome to my photo setup. One of the first things you guys are going to notice is that it's on a gray neutral background. There's a lot of debate on eBay and YouTube whether you should use white background or this neutral background. My recommendation is that you use a natural neutral background because it gives a more accurate depiction of the clothing or the item that you're actually selling and that the buyer will be receiving. A lot of times if it's on a white background, especially if it's in a floating white background, the item looks brand new, even though it's used, even though it says in multiple locations in the listing, hey, this is used, you get a lot of returns saying, thought this was new. So that's why I encourage a neutral background. I actually have these sticky tiles that I just put on some uh, styrofoam boards and that I place on a table. Those are available in my Amazon subscription in my Amazon store that you can find on the uh, banner of my channel. And when it comes to lighting, we've just got this window right here, gives some natural light. I have this five bulb lamp that I got from Target. My wife loves that store. And I've just got these Linko lights. These are also available in my Amazon store if you guys want to check them out. Just a good combination of natural light and creative light. It gives your photos a good good representation here. Now how I take my photos is I just have it flat lay here. This is just under waist level for me. I take a photo right here. Then I go ahead. I take a photo of the tag with the size showing. Then I'm going to take kind of a wide angle right here to show the pattern of the shirt and any logos or anything. Then this is a good example here. This is a golf polo shirt that just has this random, There's this has nothing to do with Travis Matthew. It's just a random golf company or um, golf course. No need to even put that in your description. Just highlight it in the photos. Then what I do, I'm doing this one-handed, is I flip this over. I take measurements of the back. I obviously take pictures of any stains or anything that's going on. And then I have this, what's called the reseller ruler. When I go ahead and I take photos, I usually typically do it on the back. You want to show, sorry, this is probably the least quality part of the photo of the uh, video here. You want to make sure that you have the length from the top to the bottom. And the most common question that I get on eBay is what is the pit to pit measurement? You don't need the reseller ruler. Any measuring tape will work. But you definitely want to include at least those two measurements so that way people know what they're getting and they can ask less questions and that results in more sales. All right, and then quickly here, I just wanted to talk about shipping. I encourage everyone to do flat rate shipping on clothing. I don't encourage free shipping for several reasons. I have a video on why I don't do free shipping. And then also calculated shipping when it comes to items like this that are bought so often on eBay. It's just a lot of people don't like to pay the calculated shipping. And there's a bunch of different strategies, but what I do is flat rate shipping. For any clothing item that goes for less than a pound, I just put it as a flat rate shipping for $5.87. You can do five bucks, you can do six bucks, you can even do seven if you'd like to, just whatever you guys want to do. And then for everything that is over a pound, my pants, my jackets, things of that nature, I have a flat rate shipping policy within my eBay store called Heavy Clothes that's $8.99. I usually am able to squeeze them into a flat rate envelope. If need to be, I can put them in a poly bag if they're a little too big. But I use those two flat rate shipping methods for all of my clothing across the board. All right, guys, we're going to hop into some what are called bolos. Be on the lookout for items, just items that you want to pick up when you see. Like I said, the best way to do that is research it on your own. But YouTube videos and other resources are really awesome for helping as well. Before I hop into my 10 bolos, I just wanted to give a few more pro tips. Um, the first one, sizing. There are much more people buying large, extra large than there are people buying medium and small. Mediums and smalls are still worth picking up, especially if the brand and the, t and the pattern and things like that are all on point. But they're just going to sell a lot slower because not as many people are looking for the smalls and mediums. Extra larges and larges are the two most bought sizes on eBay and on e-commerce in general. So those are going to sell significantly quicker for you in both men's and women's categories. But then the fastest selling items are the, uh, the, the big and tall. So that, that's a different distinction. There's regular and then there's also big and tall. Big and tall items sell significantly quicker because they're harder to find. 
and they don't make as many so you have to get these specialized clothing so when you find those they sell a lot quicker and then anything 3x 4x 5x even 6x those are going to sell significantly faster another thing that you guys are going to want to research and to help your items sell faster is you're going to want to identify patterns and prints and things like that there's these patterns i'll let you guys do your own research on eBay and Google and YouTube about geometric Aztec, Aztec. There's a bunch of these different patterns that sell for more money and sell quicker on eBay that you want to be looking out for. Another thing you guys are going to want to identify with very quickly is vintage tags. A lot of people ask me, how do I know if an, an article of clothing is vintage or not? The best way to do that is to just look up on Google Nike vintage tags filter it to images and there's guys and gals that have gone over in depth what tags to look for that make a Nike shirt vintage. You can do the same thing for Polo Ralph Lauren, Tommy Hilfiger, all of these brands. It's, it's all available on Google and on YouTube. There's YouTube videos about all these brands. You definitely want to take some time to familiarize yourself with vintage tags because that can make the difference between an $8 shirt and an $80 shirt and the difference between an $80 shirt and an $800 shirt. So like I mentioned in this video, take some time outside of the thrift stores when you have downtime, when you're watching TV, you know, when you're laying down right before bed to take a look at all these things because it can really teach you and level up your game. All right, guys, just really quickly because this video is starting to get on the longer side. I wanted to go over 10 bolos to be looking out for. I have another video called the top 20 men's selling brands on eBay, something along those lines. You guys can find it on my channel. But I just wanted to give quickly 10 bolos to be on the lookout for. One of the first ones, the shirt that I'm wearing right now, Travis Matthew. A lot of people don't list this correctly because they put Travis Matthews with an S or they put it with a double T when it's just M-A-T-H-E-W. So a lot of people ask me, man, how do you sell some of your Travis Matthews shirts for so much more money? And that's because I'm titling it correctly so it's easier to find in search. And especially people that really like the brand, they're going to type it incorrectly and they're going to see my shirts before other people's pop up. Travis Matthews is a great one to be looking out for. Another one that a lot of people talk a lot of crap on. They say it's saturated. They say it's unsellable. Man, I'm, I'm making thousands of dollars a year selling Tommy Bahama. Not all Tommy Bahama is made the same. Some of them are only worth eight bucks. Some of them are worth 80. Some of them are worth 800. There's a lot of different ones you want to look out for. Anything that's embroidered, that's another keyword that you guys got to do some research on. Anything that has a reference to like tequila or anything like that is going to sell for more. There's so many shirts within that brand that sell for a ton of money a lot of people are sleeping on it so i'm going to continue to keep selling them day after day year after year third brand that i want to talk about is cinch it's a western one so if it's going to be significantly easier to find in some locations significantly harder in others it's a rodeo western cowboy shirt a lot of uh, cowboys wear it day to day a lot of the top guys in the rodeo sphere wear them to competitions Definitely a good one to be looking out for as well. Number four is a really popular one here on eBay. It's called, on YouTube, it's called Robert Graham. Now these shirts used to go for minimum $100. The really crazy designs would always go for like three, 400. A lot of the crazy designs are still going for the multiple hundred, but the average shirt has now dwindled down to about 50 or $60. But hey, if you pick up a shirt for four to $8 that sells for 60, let's go. I actually just found my second one this year. Um, so it's been six months and I've only found two. Just found another one this morning, so that's definitely one that you guys are going to want to be looking out for. They've kind of made the flip cuff super popular. They didn't invent it, but in my eyes as a millennial, when I think of flip cuff, I think of Robert Graham. One of my personal favorites, I find it all the time in my state and in my town specifically, is Ariat. They uh, were a, a cowboy boots company. They also sell shirts and pants and all that good stuff. I find Ariat shirts all the time. You want to be looking out for the Pro Series ones and also the Flame Retardant ones. It's just Aria FR. Man, those shirts sell really fast and for a lot of money. Another one that I find pretty often that's a really good flip is Peter Millar. All Peter Millar shirts sell very well. It's a very popular brand. But you want to be looking out for the Summer Comfort line. Peter Millar is a quick flip every single time. One of the ones that I find in my town a lot as well is Untuck It. Untuck It is one that sells very quickly. 
sells usually anywhere between $20 and $30, so it's always a good pickup as well. Another clothing to be looking out for is Filson. There's a lot of different variations of the name Filson. It's F-I-L-S-O-N. Man, these are quality garments that people really love. It's one of them that I find rarely, but when I find it, it's an automatic pickup every single time. My favorite brand to find that gets me the most excited here in my state is Cool, K-U-H-L. They're, they actually have their headquarters here in Salt Lake City, West Valley to be more specific. I find their clothes all the time and it is an awesome brand that sells for a premium. People love it. I'm also gonna throw in Patagonia while I'm at it. Patagonia, everyone knows that outdoor brand. From their shirts to their jackets, everything sells really well and really quickly. A North Face can be put up there as well, kind of the same thing. And the last one I want to talk about here, I think I've done anywhere from 9 to 11 or 12, actually isn't a brand. It's just something to be looking out for, and that's employee shirts. I was very surprised to find that employee shirts sell very well, whether it's Amazon shirts, Taco Bell shirts, AT&T wireless shirts. I even sold a vintage Blockbuster shirt for 80 bucks the day I listed it. Employee shirts rock. You gotta you gotta start picking those up when you see them at thrift stores or the bins or at garage sales. People that work at these places, they don't want to buy a new shirt from the company for forty dollars. They want to get it used for twenty bucks on eBay. So they're flooding in every day.